Welcome to Graceful Warriors, where listeners lace up their combat boots and join Monica Hansen, a former Desert Storm Army Sergeant with seven years of service. Monica, along with her expert guests, provide real biblical advice for navigating the spiritual battles of life. The show begins now. Well, welcome back to the Graceful Warriors Show. Hey, I'm your host, Monica, and it is great that you are joining us today. So first of all, we just have a few announcements. If you haven't checked this out, I had the complete honor of going on the Chris Voss podcast. Yes, I was a guest on there. He is known. He is in the top 50 Ford's Entrepreneurs and he is an author, a speaker. He he has an audience of over 24 million. Yes, 24 million. So I had the the pleasure. The Lord opened up doors, and I was able to go on uh, the Chris Voss show and tell my story of how I got saved. It was it was the the ultimate door opening scenario where God just said, "Let her rip, Monica," and I was able to share my testimony of how I got saved. I was able to share God's hand in my life and creating the Captured by His Heart book. And we had just over 580 viewers just on his Facebook page alone. And we haven't even got to his YouTube and and that, that whole, all of his social media posts. So I just give God all the glory for that opportunity. And you just, it really goes to encourage those that are, following me on my Facebook page, those that are doing podcasting, those that are trying to branch out, those that are beginning to start their podcast, is that nothing is too big for God. Nothing is too difficult for God. He orders our steps. It's just we have to be willing to walk in that and to follow him and be open to whatever the Lord wants to use in our life or who he wants us to to minister or maybe we have to step out and so this is just a moment of encouraging you if you're starting out if you're podcasting if you don't have very many views hey i don't have a whole lot of views i see where where my audience is i see you out there in ashburn virginia i see you out there in north carolina kentucky south carolina I see you here in Idaho, my great state of Idaho. Come on. I see you out there in Rathdrum and over here where I am in St. Mary's, Idaho. I thank you for all of our listeners there. You know, it just goes to show you that if we are willing to do and say and step out, all of those things, if we're willing to do that, God will use us. And um, so I give God all the glory. If you haven't checked that episode out, um, it is on my Facebook page on the Graceful Warrior 8. If you're trying to follow me and to look for me, go to Facebook. And you're like, well, Monica, I don't like Facebook. I know. Neither do I. But you know what? I stay on my Facebook page for the podcast. I stay on my private one and my friends. And that's it. And anything else? No. So I get you right there. So check out my Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash graceful warrior eight. And that's like the number eight and put the number, don't spell the word out, put the number eight. And um, so I just want to give you guys that information. And then don't forget to subscribe on the graceful warrior. You can check us out on the graceful warrior.com and subscribe to that page And you get a bonus episode. You get 24-hour release of every episode that comes out. You'll get the Wednesday Bible study. You'll get the Friday coffee break with God. And then also, here's what I want to say. Since I'm on coffee break with God, I have been thinking more about this. And I have been checking out more um, uh, podcasts, Christian podcasts. And it's kind of like they are also doing those Coffee with God, coffee, um, you know, something to do with coffee. And so I wanted to always up my ante, always strive for better, you know. And and so I want to go ahead and change the name 
of Coffee Break with God since there's so many out there. And I just want to make it according to our niche. Here we are, the Graceful Warriors. So from now on, we're going to start calling it Warrior's Corner, right? The Warrior's Corner or maybe Warrior's Table because that's where we actually still have our coffee. We can still have our coffee break with God and maybe just call it the Warrior's Table. And uh, kind of like the Knight's Table, the Knights of the Round Table, right? There's your, There it is. Yep. Warrior's Table. It's sold. I love it. I absolutely love it. The Warrior's Table. And that's where we can sit down and still do our interviews on Friday of all of our guests. And we have a great, great lineup. This Friday, matter of fact, we have Daniel James. Um, he is coming on. He was a missionary out in Africa. Um, he's been a youth pastor. And he is getting ready to come on Friday on Warrior's Table, and he's going to start sharing the role of the Holy Spirit, something that we need to really learn about. We we know he's the third person in the Trinity, but how much more do you know of the Holy Spirit? You know, and we know that he is supposed to be our comforter. He is supposed to be the advocate for us. And so we're going into a deep dive with Daniel James on the teaching of the role of the Holy Spirit. Great, great episode. We're going to have him come back and do a different episode and talk about church hurt. And uh, we all have been through church hurt. I have. I'm sure plenty of you guys have. A lot of you just absolutely just quit going to church because you deal with church hurt and the wounds are too, too old, too sensitive. We're going to have Daniel come back and talk about church hurt, how to forgive, how to let go. All right. And then, um, and then if you have not, if you have not purchased my book, you can grab that on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. You can grab it as an ebook or as a paperback. It's called Captured by His Heart. Hey, it's only 10 bucks. It's a book about poetry from, from the Lord's heart to ours. And um, you have those questions of, you know what, who is God and what is my purpose here? So God is going to answer all of that through this book and maybe encourage you to get back closer to the Lord. And maybe you're, you've fallen away. Maybe it'll help bring you back in to come back to your first love. All right. And then we've got uh, just a little bit over, what, a week um, about eight days left for the sale on uh, the Graceful Swag Store. If you haven't checked us out yet, uh, the ticker is on the screen. It's called graceful-swag.printify.me. Everything on there is 15% off. You can grab your t-shirts, coffee mugs. you got tumblers. We've got an array of things. So 15% off this sale is going on now after that. It's probably gone until next year when we do something different. All right. And so don't forget to grab your shirt. And then um, also you could check out my author website, Monica-Hanson.com. Monica-Hanson.com. That ticker's on your screen right there. You could check all about your, your host, Monica, as, as, as a host and what I do in my off time. And the book is there. Every episode is there. So you can listen in there as well. So um, check that out for you. And uh, today, today I want to check out Isaiah 43, 1 through 3. And, you know, if you don't know that verse, it really is a verse that honestly, I did not even know was there until I actually watched uh, The Chosen. Do you remember the first episode? If you watched if you've watched all of those episodes, do you remember the very first season and the one where Jesus, the, the actor, Jonathan Rumi, when he goes into the bar and he tells Mary Magdalene that she doesn't need that drink. And, uh, and then he goes out and he chases after her. Isn't that cool right there? I mean, to know that the Lord will chase after you. You know, he desires us so much. He desires that time with him so much. I mean, the word of God says he is a jealous God. He wants that time with you. And so just to show you how much 
He wants to be with you. He wants to, to hear your prayers. He wants to hear your laugh. He wants to hear your thoughts, your ideas. Even though he orders our steps, he still wants to hear from you. Even though he knows your thoughts, he still wants to hear from you. You know, it's like, remember being, uh, when you, if you, if any of you listeners, you have young ones around, or maybe your grandparents and you have your grandkids around, and it's the desire of your heart to hear their silly stories, what they did in school or you know, what they, they've been doing on their summer break right now. And it's an amazing thing to see the reactions on their face, to see their, their expressions, their excitement, you know, what grips their heart as a young kid. We well, see, it's that same thing with the Lord God Almighty. He wants to hear from you. He wants to hear from me. So I'm reading from uh, King James Version. And I'm looking at Isaiah 43, 1. This is how much the Lord wants to be with you. It says, but now, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob. Right there, verse 1. He is saying this to us. He has created you and I, right? He is saying, thus says the Lord to you that I have created Jacob. But who are his descendants? Who is Jacob's descendants? Well, we are, right? We are the descendants. So he is talking to us. And then he goes on to say, and he who formed you, O Israel. You know, um, what was it? Isaac, Isaac's name, or was it Jacob? Changed from Jacob to Israel because Jacob meant uh, the deceiver. And so his name changed to Israel after he wrestled with the angel which was the Lord God, right? All right. So he says, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. And you know, when I, when I went back and I was thinking about this and my mind always goes back to the chosen series um, and that particular scene where he comes out and he actually quotes the scripture to Mary that meant so much to her as a child when, when her father told her, whenever she becomes afraid, that she would quote this scripture and it would help her to not be afraid. And so what, is, what does Jesus do in the chosen scene? Because she was afraid and she was running. And he says, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name, you are mine. And then he calls her by her name, Mary of Magdala. And yet she was known as a different name because of what she did in the bars as a prostitute, right? So they said late leading up to it, right? So, and then it goes on to say this, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. And, you know, thinking about this, this is really ever since I started watching The Chosen when it first came out, you know, and there was the whole hype of it. And there's still plenty of hype out there. Um, for all the new seasons that are coming out. What are we on season four? They're working on season five right now. Um, it's just amazing that when the hype of that and this verse came out in there, I mean, I raced to go, where is that verse? And it just grabbed my attention because it says on there, when you pass through the waters, we know that passing through the waters is like passing through those, those trying times of life. We've all been there. We've all gone through troubled times. We'll all continue to go through those troubled times, right? But it's, it's amazing that he says that he will be with us during those times. Because you're just like, you know, even through my own personal life, things that I have wrestled with, things that I have gone through, trials, um, testing of your faith, all of that 
it, it seems like it could be like the worst thing possible. And it'll even seem like, well, Lord, you said you would be with me, but where are you? I don't feel your presence. I don't know that you're there. How do I know you're there? You know, we go through all of these thoughts. We start doubting. Well, where is the Lord? I should be able to go through this with a breeze, you know, and it's not like that. In those trying times that we're going to have until the day we die, it's learning to understand that he says, when you go through them, he will be there. And he even tells you, don't fear. Don't fear of the situation that you're in, whether it's financial struggle. A lot of people are trying to make ends meet, trying to pull a bill out of the hat. I've, I've been there. I've done that. Pull the bill out of the hat and go, okay, which bill is getting paid today? You know, most importantly, it should be rent, right? <laughs> you got to have a roof over your, over your head. And so it's, it's like, we have to remember that the Lord is with us all the time. He says, when you go through them, it's not if, if you go through, because we know of all the trials and and testing and, and drama that we've gone through in our life, right? I mean, who, who can say they haven't been through it? Nobody can. But it really is a moment of when you see that drama creep up or when you see that time of hardship creep up, it's a time to reflect. I would say to reflect, number one, and to think back. How many times was the Lord with you when you went through that troubled time? How many times did the Lord help you when you cried out to him for help in that sticky situation that you just swore to the Lord? If you help me out of this, Lord, I will praise you. I will give you my heart. Do you remember those times? Oh, my gosh. I remember those times. You know, how many times have we, we asked the Lord to to bless the situation that we're in, that it would work out. Or maybe you got to pray for that job or pray for healing and, and, and you, you got injured and you asked the Lord to pray for you or you've been having trouble. You know, our body wears down as we get older and you've asked the Lord, I need help here. And the Lord has just healed you. And so it really is counting those many blessings, name them one by one as you go through and then when you're going through the waters, as he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. The, the waters of life, the rivers of life, the, the troubles, the heartaches, the, the, the drama, the, the trying, you know, of, of our patience, of our faith, of our character. It really is seeking the Lord and going, I remember, I remember when you helped me out of this situation. I remember when you answered my prayer, you know, for, for this situation. And that's how, that's really how I learned. I remember going on walks when I first became a Christian and I was, I was living in Texas and I, I started taking my service dog out for a walk and I was, I was walking down the road one day and I was like, well, I'm out here. I might as well start learning to talk to you. And I did, I said that out loud. And at the same time, I'm kind of like looking around going, anybody see me? I'm not just looking like a dumb idiot, right? Just talking out there. People probably thinking I'm talking to my dog or, you know, but, Praise the Lord, there was nobody around, right? And so I didn't feel stupid, you know, doing that. But it really was a moment for me to go, okay, then let's do this. And I didn't know how to pray. Not very many people really know how to pray. I mean, and is there a wrong reason, wrong way to pray? No. Is there a right way to pray? There are many prayers that the Lord says that he says to bring all types of prayers before him. So there's no right or wrong. But here's one thing I would say. The Lord does say that when we come before him, 
you know, it is, you think of a king and this is what I do when I come before him in my, in my own prayer life is that you think of a king sitting on his throne and you're coming down the hall into the king's royal court to go visit him, to place a request before him. And you would want, you come before, and even in the movies, you come before him and you're like, oh, great king, the one who provides us food. Oh, great. You know, you're, you're giving that praise, right? You're worshiping that, that king. It's the same thing with the Lord is to, it says that he inhabits the praises of his people. So why not give him that worship? Why not express all of those things? Man, I thank the Lord for my house that I have here up in the mountains. I live in a picturesque town of St. Mary's, Idaho. I mean, it is a small town. We don't have Walmarts. We don't have major grocery chains up here. We don't have fast food restaurants up here. It is all community reaching out to each other. We all have, you know, Bob and Shirley run the fish and fry shop, you know, or you've got, you know, Monica and Mike that's running the, the radio station on Fifth Avenue here in St. Mary's, Idaho, which not even true, right? But as an example. And so it's a community that really helps each other. We're, we're a town of um, loggers, Loggers is the business of this town and good Lord, we have probably about eight bodies of water, whether they're lakes or rivers, um, before you even get to the next big town, big city of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Um, from there all the way up, we have all of these lakes and rivers on your way up here. And we are literally in the mountains. So when it gets dark at night, it gets dark. And deer are rolling through your yard and you're just like, excuse me, <laughs> you know? And so not only are you picking up dog poop, but you're picking up deer poop in your yard. They come through, you got to have the right flowers in your flower beds or the deer just eat them up. You know, you've got to have your gardens. You have to have fences that are almost eight, 10 feet high to keep them out of your garden, unless you've got a, um, garden, what is it? A garden house, a greenhouse to put everything inside. So, you know, it's, there is a rough part of life out here and it's fighting the local deer because the local deer, they're just no joke. Right. But I know I got off on a tangent on my own town and, but I love my town. I love the peace around here, but it still goes without saying is that when you're doing your prayer life is to give them thanks. Thank them for the house that you're in, you know, to sit there and go, man, I wish I had a bigger house. I wish, I wish I was out of this apartment and in a house. It, when we start doing that, when we start wishing that we had something else other than what we have, it's, it's actually showing the ungratefulness to the Lord for what he has blessed us to have. You didn't have to have that apartment. You didn't have to have that house that you're in. You didn't have to be in that state you're in or have that car that you have. You know, he, he has blessed us with so many different things. And so that's what I have done is come before the Lord and I have named those things. I thank him for my both my vehicles. I thank him for the riding lawnmowers. I thank him for, for all of my listeners. I thank him for the 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 ability to sit here and do podcasting with you and just learn over the years how to better the podcast. And then the Lord says this, not only count your blessings and the fact that he inhabits the praises of his people, you are praising him. You are thanking him for all that you have, you know, even thank him that you, you have the money to pay bills Maybe we got to thank him for the wisdom to, to be able to handle the money, right? <laughs> All of us are learning during that time, you know, but the Lord also says this, is that we must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you're not coming to the Lord to worship him truthfully, 
honestly, with your whole heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with everything you've got. He's how how can he really listen to it? It's it becomes becomes really nothing. It's kind of like, well, thank you, Lord, for this day and goodbye. I gotta get to work. And then you take off. Amen. You know, I forgot to say amen. No. It, you know, it is it is saying, Lord, I love you enough to get up five minutes early before you got to get ready for work and spend that time with him. Make it count. You know, and Guess what? See what the Lord will do each time that you spend with him. Next thing you know, you're just wanting to get up and spend 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes. You know, I have found that I'm like, okay, like here's an example. Is that uh, there is some, I guess, some senators or governors over in Tennessee that are calling on their state to fast um, sometime in the month or for the month um, and do fasting, like whether you're going to get away from social media for a week, three days, whatever it is, a month. And then there's just an array of people that are joining up in Tennessee to fast for their nation, to bring God back into their nation that they realize these are governors. These are the center. These are the city, the state. They are now calling on all the churches uh, to go ahead and fast for America because we need God to be back in America. And so I have learned to go, all right, I don't fast. I fasted like when you got to go do medical blood work, you know, you got to go do that initial time for lab work. Right. And so I've done that, but that's easy. Like you get up, you, you run to the doctor's office, you give blood, you can come back and you can eat. Right. But fasting for something that the Lord um, will do has always been a difficult thing for me because I'm like, I remember my mom and dad would fast and they would fast about things. And then they would pray during that time. What if you just like you fasted for dinner, then you fasted and then you went and prayed during that whole dinner time. So if everybody sat down at five o'clock to eat and dinner was done by six, you would pray for that entire hour. And I was like, as a kid, I couldn't even pray for five minutes. I was falling asleep. I was um, braiding my hair or I wanted to grab my dolls and play with my dolls. You know, you, you get sidetracked. You, you don't know. And so I've never actually like fasted for something that the Lord has called us to do. And our pastor is calling us to fast. And so I'm like, Lord, what do I do? You know, podcasting is half my life. And then there's my family. You know, and I'm like, if I put aside podcasting, what would the people say? <laughs> you know, I'm like, sorry, guys, uh, I'm going to fast um, an entire month. So you won't see me for a month. You know, I was like, Lord, well, what do I do? And so for me, as I began to think, I was like, what is my morning ritual like? And my morning ritual was. I was up by six o'clock, sometimes seven o'clock in the morning, let the dogs out. And while they were out during their business, I would go roll up um, the doors on the garden shed, put the fan in there, put that on, walk around weed, do all of this. And I'm like, I would eat up an hour. And I'm like, you know what? My flowers can wait. They're not going to die. My garden's not going to die for one hour. And so I began to do that where I just was like, you know what? Let the dogs out, bring them in. And then I'm going to go out and spend that, spend that time with the Lord. And next thing you know, an hour flew by like that. I was like, oh my gosh, it's eight o'clock. And so that's what I'm saying as far as spend that quality time with the Lord when you when you can sit down and and have that quality of time, maybe it's better for you to do it at night. Maybe it's quieter for you, you know, or 
Maybe it's, it's first thing in the morning. So that way you build that relationship with the Lord. And then you can look back and go, I remember that. I remember this. I remember he pulled me through that. So that way you could say, I know that when I pass through the waters, he will be with me. Now we could turn it around for, for our hearts and to quote it back to the Lord God Almighty and say, I know when I pass through the waters, you'll be with me. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow me. When, when I walk through the fire, I will not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch me. Right? It's a great faith lifter too, but now it has more relevance to you when you can ponder all the things that the Lord has done for you in, in life, you know, and it has more meaning. It has more impact on you. And that's where your faith is built up more because now you're pondering the good things that God did for you in the past. And now you're stepping out going, here's where I can stand up in faith and walk through this, this problem that I'm going through the situation I have at work, this drama I have in my, maybe in my marriage or in my family, it, it's, it's walking in faith, knowing because he was with me back then. He is the same God that'll walk with me right now. And all these things are not going to overcome me. That won't defeat me because God already won the battle. We just have to step out in faith. Well, I hope that blessed you. I hope that it encouraged you. I kind of went off on a few tangents right there, but hey, this is our podcast. This is our episode, right? So I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that it inspired you. And remember, no place that you can be that God does not see you. If you were in a dark cave, he would see you. He saw Elijah in the cave and he even told Elijah to come out, right? Because Elijah was hiding. He said, Elijah or Elisha? I don't remember which guy. <laughs> I know one of them was in a cave and the Lord said, step out, right? He couldn't do his work hiding in a cave. And the word of God even says, and even if I was to go to hell, well, the Lord God was there already and he defeated that. So no matter where you are, Look up. The Lord is with you always. And he will walk with you through the waters, through the flames, and you will not be burnt. I hope this blessed you today. And until then, I want to thank you, the viewers and the listeners on the Graceful Warrior Podcast. I really appreciate you guys each and every week. And we want to remember always to lace up those combat boots. Why? because it's a battlefield out there. And until next week, have a blessed, blessed day. Stay nice and cool out there. Maybe stop and get an iced tea or maybe an ice cream. That sounds good. All right, until next time, peace out. Thank you for tuning in to Graceful Warriors. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. For more information and updates, please visit the websites thegracefulwarrior.com or monica-hansen.com. Until next time, remember to lace up those combat boots.